So in this video, we're going to talk about preferences and marginal benefit. And preferences is, the definition for that is, it, it describes a person's likes and dislikes. And that's generally the definition uh, that we use for preferences. And that's all about that. Uh, marginal benefit is what I went through in the first chapter, well, briefly. It's the benefit received from consuming one more unit of a good or service. And we measure marginal benefit from a good or service by the most that people are willing to pay for an additional unit of it. So the general idea is you're willing to pay less for a good that it is worth to you, but you're not willing to pay more than it's worth. So as an example, suppose that pizza is a slice of pizza is worth $5 or is, uh, it costs $5, and that's a really expensive piece of pizza, but yeah, it's just an example. If you've never had pizza, that's the situation. If you've never had pizza, it, it may be worth $10 to you. So it's worth, uh, so right so right now, when you never had pizza, it's actually, uh, to you, you're getting a deal because it only costs $5, and it's worth $10 to you. So you're willing to pay the $5. So this is the situation. You're willing to pay uh, so you're willing to pay less, you're willing to pay less for a good than it is worth to you. But if you have pizza every day, then it's probably worth less, it's probably worth like $2. So in this situation with uh, pizza is worth $5 to you, you're not willing to pay more than it's worth because it's only worth to you, it's only worth $2 and you have to pay $5 for it. So you're not willing to pay that $5. The most I'm willing to pay for one more unit of something, that is something that measures marginal benefit. And uh, moving on, general principle is a really important principle, and I suggest that you really uh, remember this. It's the more we have of any good, then the smaller it is, is its marginal benefit, and the less we are willing to pay for an additional unit of it. So pretty much a good example for this would be for me as a guy buying video games. Now, buying one copy of video games, well, buying the first copy of video games, I'm willing to pay that price that huge price that we usually pay like 50 to 70 dollars and um so we pay that 50 or 70 dollars for the first copy and usually for most people they they won't buy a second copy uh so the second copy it the marginal benefit for buying the second uh, the second copy is smaller than it is for the first copy because the first copy and the second copy is the same uh, same storyline, same thing. So then the second copy is worth way less than it is uh, when we bought the first copy. And 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 the marginal benefit is much smaller. So the more we have of any good, the smaller is the marginal benefit and less we are willing to pay for an additional unit of it. And this is also known as the principle of decreasing marginal benefit. Now, the marginal benefit curve shows the relation between marginal benefit from a good and the quantity of that good consumed. And here we have a graph of, graph of that. And yeah, this graph uh, shows the marginal benefit curve and it, we have the burgers in millions on the horizontal, the willingness to pay, uh, which is the millions of bars on the vertical. Now the curve slopes downward as we see to reflect the principle of decreasing marginal benefit. So let's just label these points A, B, C, D, E. So at point A, with burger production at uh, 0 0.5 million, the the most people are willing to pay is five five uh, bars. So at point A, let's just note this down. Point A, uh, burgers uh, at uh, 0 0.5 million produced produced. So people willing to pay, willing to pay five bars, five bars for a burger, for a burger. Okay, now let's look at the other points a bit more. Now at point B, with uh with with burgers with 
burgers at 1.5 million produced, uh, people are willing to pay, are willing to pay, uh, people are willing to pay four bars, four bars for a burger. And uh, let's look at point E, which I'm not going to write down, but at point E, with, with burger production at uh, 4.5, people are willing to pay uh, one bar, uh, one bar of, yeah, one energy bar for the burger. And that's, uh, that illustrates the principle of decreasing marginal benefit. See, when we have, uh, we don't, when we don't have that much burgers, people are willing to pay a lot for that burger. When, but when we have an excess of burgers, well, people are willing to pay less, are willing to give up less for that burger. And that's all I want to go through in this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I have a question. Uh, do you guys like it when I actually have all these definitions and uh, concepts written out to you, or do you prefer to see me write them uh, uh, write them out on you while I'm doing the videos? Because I only write out the definitions to save more time for you, but I could also uh, write write all these all these definitions out while I'm recording. So if you could leave a comment and uh, say what you would pr prefer me to do while when I'm doing these videos. But otherwise, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.